Yo! What's up everyone? We are back to bringing you some interview questions after uploading a couple of the remastered lectures on analog IC design. We wanted to issue a special thank you to all of our patrons who, by and large, want to remain anonymous. We can understand why and will respect their collective decision. The support for the remastered lectures has been beyond amazing and we are not stopping until we bring you the entire course. That being said, we cannot forget our roots and why we started this channel. Interview questions. One of our team members recently interviewed for a position at a mid-sized company and one of the interviewers completely surprised us with what started as a seemingly simple question. Have you ever gone to an interview and afterwards thought to yourself, man, those were some great questions? Let us know in the comments below. If you have ever reached out to us for advice, you will notice that we always emphasize what has been taught to us by more experienced engineers. That is, interviews are nothing more than technical discussions. Engineers who treat interviews like they were exams will rarely succeed. This is because teams are looking for someone they can collaborate with daily. That means keep an open mind, look beyond the obvious, and stimulate a conversation. This video was specially challenging to make as we wanted to convey how an interviewer builds up upon concepts to lead the candidate to the right solution. We wanted to give you a glimpse of what a real interview setting looks like. So we decided to invite one of our Patreon members for a mock interview. We realized the following though, while we upload real interview questions, since we already know the solution, it may give the impression that solving these questions during a real interview setting can seem like a piece of cake. In reality, you will likely be nervous. It is also possible that the question is so open-ended that there are many solutions. So, navigating the questions the way we show here will not take the approximate 10 minutes that we have for the video. Instead, it will likely take 30 minutes or more. We are not here to sell you a false sense of security and that just because you watch our channel, you will ace your interview. Interviewing is not easy. There is a lot of guidance and preparation that goes along with it. We are here to provide some of that guidance and preparation. The key is being exposed to as many questions as possible. If you feel like you haven't been exposed to enough questions in our channel, we have plenty more on our Patreon site. In order to give you some perspective, today's video will showcase how we normally present the questions and answers to you. In a later video, we will showcase how the same question is approached in a real interview setting. So be on the lookout for that. Let's now jump into the content for today. The interviewer will start by asking this very simple question. Can you draw a high pass filter? To which you will likely draw the following. It is likely you will be asked, what's the transfer function and corner frequency of this filter? Again, very basic stuff. We know that the transfer function will be j omega rc divided by j omega rc plus 1 and the corner frequency will be at 1 over 2 pi rc. It is our experience that good interviewers first anchor a topic and focus on building up on the question. The fact that the interviewer decided to start with a high pass filter is not by chance and will become very important later on. The interviewer will then state the following. Imagine I now need the same high pass filter action, but my incoming signal is too weak. It needs to be amplified. Can you design a circuit that does this? There are many ways to interpret this question, as you will later see in the future release of our mock interview video. Can you think of some of them? 
I will give you about seven seconds to pause the video and think. For now, let's assume our first choice was to draw this differentiator circuit. Again, the interviewer will likely ask you for the transfer function of this circuit. We will not spend much time deriving it as we know you can do it, but we will write it over here. Notice how the interviewer has been building up on the question and checking up on your core concepts while doing so. We have now reached the point where the actual evaluation of the candidate begins. The interviewer will direct you to the following circuit and say, imagine I have this voltage source right here. This source can be anything, a sensor, an RF antenna, anything. And the spectrum of this voltage source looks like this. The signal passes through some resistor dividers and then goes onto the active filter we designed. If we assume everything on the right to be ideal and everything on the left to be real, what could go wrong with the circuit? We are going to stop here for a second and say, wow, what a question. This is what open-ended questions should look like. The interviewer can immediately gauge your level of experience and problem-solving skills from the answer to this question alone. We will now show you one of the many answers to this question. However, do you want to know how an actual electrical engineer with over two years of experience answered when asked this very same question? Be sure to check out the mock interview video once it's released. All right, so instead of convoluting every single thing that could go wrong with the real or ideal parts, let's tell the interviewer the following. In order to assess all the possible effects that can break the circuit, I will start by looking at them individually, meaning I will assume everything to be ideal except for that very specific thing. If we think of resistors, sensors, antennas, etc., we think of noise. If we assume that noise is the only non-ideality, then the spectrum at this node will contain some noise it doesn't really matter how much it is, as long as it is not zero. Remember how I mentioned earlier in the video that the interviewer anchoring the question on a high-pass filter was very important? Well, if the high-pass filter is ideal, that means its gain will become infinite at some infinite frequency any noise beyond the frequency of interest will be amplified and we won't have the clean amplified spectrum we wanted at the output. In fact, even the amplified spectrum will be somewhat distorted by the noise within its band. This is of course dependent on both the noise floor and how the filter was designed. And there you have it, one of the many possible solutions to this great open-ended question. Of course, there are many other non-idealities that impact the system. And during your interview, you should try to point all of them out to your interviewer. However, notice how the interviewer engages your abstract thinking simply by asking you to think in both ideal and non-ideal terms within the same circuit. Don't forget to smash that like, share, and subscribe button if you found the content helpful. See you next time. Cheers.